Masechet Besad Daftet. We're going to be discussing preparing on Yom Tov for food, which is basically permitted. The question is, how many steps of preparation are really allowed? And the Mishnah that we were uh, just talking about was about um, doing Shechita for a bird, which you're allowed to do. You're allowed to kill a bird to cook it and eat it. The question was, what about covering its blood, which is necessary, but that's going to require going in and getting dirt. And we talked about dirt being mukseh and making holes and problems related to that. However, everyone agreed, Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai, even though Bet Shammai was a little more machmir in this case, agreed that if you have dirt prepared from beforehand, you say, I'm going to use this, this dirt for covering the blood, then it's perfectly per- fine. And you can go ahead on Yom Tov, kill the bird and cover the blood. And now we're going to be dealing with um, a variant case. Amar Abba, Shechat Sipor Me'erev Yom Tov, En Mechasin Oto Be'yom Tov. Here, you did Shechita before Yom Tov. You're preparing the meal in advance. But you didn't get a chance or forgot to cover the blood on Erev Yom Tov. And so now you want to go and cover it on Yom Tov? Rabba says, no, now you can't do that. Why? Because... You're right, even though if you did the Shechita on Yom Tov, you would be allowed. Here, you could have done it before. And there's a general rule that anything that you could have prepared from before and with equal results, then you should try to do it before. So now you can't play makeup on Yom Tov and do some errands that you should have done beforehand. And uh, first of all, it's extra exertion and um, to do that. So therefore, it's not permitted. Uh, even though it's not permitted, to cover the dirt, the chicken that you slaughtered is still allowed to eat, still kosher. You missed out on the mitzvah, but it doesn't make, it's not a problem for, the, for eating the meal. However, here's a contrast case, Rabbi says, Gilgel isa me'ayrev yom tov, mafrish mimena halata biyom tov. Um, uh, if you're preparing a large dough, uh, 43 betzim, you have to take hala. Now as background, you can bake on, on yom tov itself. Um, you take flour and you mix it together. And then if you were doing that whole thing on Yom Tov, you would be permitted to take challah on Yom Tov and then uh, bake the rest. However, here's a similar case. If you made the dough before Yom Tov started, so you could have done it beforehand. And uh, therefore, you might think it's the same thing. And we, we would tell the person, oh, you should have taken challah before. But no, Rabbi says a dough is not like a bird. The bird, you cannot cover the blood if you did shechita yesterday, but the dough, you can take on Yom Tov, even though you made the dough yesterday. What's the difference? A couple of possibilities. One is that covering the blood and getting dirt, that takes a lot of exertion. And even if you prepared it and all that, still, you shouldn't do exertion on Yom Tov for no reason. And uh, here, chala does not have, does not involve exertion. That's one. Another difference between the two is the chala, if you don't take chala, you cannot eat the dough. And then you're just going to sit there and you're going to miss out on enjoying this, this uh, nice fresh bread on the holiday. Uh, so therefore, we're going to permit the person to take chala, whereas the bird, you can eat it anyway. You missed out on the mitzvah, but you're not missing out on eating uh, those uh, chicken wings. <clears throat> okay, so that is the halacha of Rabbah. Very interesting to compare these cases. However, not everybody agrees. Abu de Shmuel, this is the father of the famous Amora Shmuel, says, Amar afilu gilgel yom tov, en mafrish mimena chalata yom tov. He is more stringent. And he said, if you uh, took, if you, um, uh, in both cases, the chala also, if you made the dough before yom tov, you cannot separate the chala on yom tov. He's not convinced by, by these reasons. For, for, um, for whatever reason, maybe he thinks that, you know, you shouldn't, you, you should make sure to do everything beforehand and therefore don't use the Yom Tov time for something you could have done before, um, even though it's not an exertion. Okay, that's the father of Shemuel. Now question, Lema Peliga de Shemuel de Shemuel. Does the father of Shemuel disagree with Shemuel the son? Because Damash Shemuel the son, Chalat Hosala Aris Ochel Ve'olech Be'achar Kach Mafrish. He said a halacha that if you're outside the land of Israel, the laws of chala are more lenient. And there you can make a big dough, bake it and everything, and you can eat almost all of it. And at the, at the end, leave a, lo- a little bit over for chala. Whereas usually in, in Israel, you have to take chala first, otherwise you can't eat it. But he says, no, you can do the opposite. You can eat, go ahead and eat first. And according to that, well, that would you know, take away one of the reasons here. Since you can eat it anyway, 
So then it's more like the bird. It should be permitted. So uh, according to the logic of Shemuel, it seems like hala is not so important. It's not really necessary. You know, also one of the reasons why you might prohibit is because you're doing tikkun. You're taking something that was unedible and now making it edible. But that's not even, the, that it also is not the case here because according to Shemuel, you're allowed to eat it. So on all these accounts, it should be permitted to eat the, uh, to take the challah, because by taking the challah, you're not really doing anything significant. So that so it looks like Shemuel disagrees with his father. Um, I mean, it's possible, but we'd rather not the, the, that the son disagrees with the father. So we're going to save them. Even Shemuel, who says that outside the land of Israel, you could take challah at the end, eat the whole, the whole thing first, and only whatever is left over. Nevertheless, even Shemuel would agree that if in the beginning you did take challah, then that challah is considered holy, and a non-Kohen is not allowed to eat it. So therefore you see that taking challah is in fact a halachically significant act, and that's why, because it is a significant act, it's not something that sh- you should try not to do on Yom Tov if you don't have to. Of course, if you're baking on Yom Tov, perfectly fine. You have fresh bread, you take challah. But if you made the dough beforehand, then you should make sure to take the challah beforehand and not do that work and fix it on Yom Tov itself. <clears throat> okay, so that's the end of that Mishnah. And now the next case. Um, before the previous Mishnah, we had... Um, three cases where Bet Shammai is more lenient regarding matters of Yom Tov, but now we're going to see a case where he is more stringent, uh, the usual pattern. Bet Shammai Omerim, En molichin et hasulam, mishobach leshobach, amavateho mechalon lechalon, ubet hilel matirin. So you have dovecoats, right? They're high up, and you need a ladder to climb up to go and get the birds. You're allowed to climb up the ladder on Yom Tov, to go and get a bird so that you can bring it down, do shechita, and eat it. That's all fine. The question is, what if the, the, this, uh, I only have one uh, um, ladder for many dovecoats, and I want to be able to move the ladder. I look up, this one, the, the, these uh, doves are not so good. I don't want to eat those. I want to move the ladder to somewhere else. Um, so the ladder, this involves exertion, a lot of exertion to move a ladder, and then go up on the another one. Is it permitted or not? Bet Shammai says, no, you cannot move it from one dove, dovecote to another. What you can do is just lean it. If you have multiple dovecotes all near each other on one pole, then you can just lean it on a, on a different uh, window rather than this window. So you could do a little bit of exertion. Bet Hillel says, you can do anything you want. You can even move it from here to the other side of your field uh, where there's another dovecote that you want better. Okay, very good. Now, Amad of Hanan Bar Ami. Machloket b'shut harabim. We're going to see Rav Hanan Bar Ami is, li- is going to limit the machloket between Bet Shemay and Bet Hillel. We're going to see two, di- two different versions of it. The first one, he's going to limit it to be on the side of leniency. And he's going to say here that this controversy is only if it's out in public. You're right, you're walking out in a public area where there's lots of people, and you have this dove coat. I'm assuming you're not stealing it, but it belongs to you. The point is, there's a lot of people around, and, um, and you want to move it. That's when Bet Shammai says no. Uh, when there's a lot of people, they see you carrying a ladder, they can say, what's that guy doing with the ladder? It must be he wants to fix his roof on, uh, on Yom Tov. And so they're going to suspect him of doing melacha. And therefore, more marit ayin problem, don't do it if it's in a public area. This is no, people are, are, are have a, a, some a be, better intentions, right? And they're going to see the guy, is, where, is he, where is he going with that ladder? And they're going to see, puts it on his dovecote. Oh, obviously, he's using it for his dovecote, which is permitted to go and get the, and get the uh, dove in there to eat it. And so therefore, Bet Hillel does not worry about Marit Ayin. So that's the Machlok. It's about Marit Ayin or not. But if it's in a private area, and nobody's looking, then everyone agrees, even Bet Shammai would be lenient and say, yes, you can move the ladder around. Okay, amazing that he can just take this Mishnah and, <clears throat> and limit it to that one case. Uh, but now we have a question. We all know, you know, Marit Ayin, there's different things. If, if no one's looking, can you do something that would be prohibited because of Marit Ayin, right? You know, and this is, uh, you're going into a restaurant and you look around, there's no one looking, and then you, that means you can go in. So, Ini. Marit Ayin, 
Afilu bechadre chadarim asur. Rav has a general principle. If the rabbi said you can't do it because of onlookers, even if you're a room inside a room and nobody's looking, you still shouldn't do it. Okay, the question is why? If the problem only is about reputation, then why not do it when no one's, if, if I know no one's looking? Well, a couple of reasons you could suggest. Number one, if you get used to it, you know, who knows? Maybe there is someone looking, right? You left the shade open, there's someone back there, there's a camera on. And so you may come to do it when someone will look. And then that, another reason is sometimes maritain isn't only about other people looking, it's about yourself. If you get accustomed to, uh, and let's say this example, to bringing, using a ladder all the time to go and get a dove coat, then you're going to say, oh, while I'm holding the ladder, oh, you know what? I had to change that bulb. I got to clean out the gutters. And then you come to do the same action for other things that are permitted, uh, that are, that are pro prohibited. So uh, therefore, Rav has this general rule. Anything in Marit Ayin, you can't do at all. So this is a challenge to Bet Shammai. Because Bet Shammai is the one that just said, Oh, in public, don't carry it along because people will think or suspect you of cleaning your roof. Um, but uh, in private, you can do it. That goes against the statement of Rav. Now, of course, Bet Shammai doesn't have to answer to Rav, but Rav has to answer to Bet Shammai. And well, uh, also Rav, is, we assume, is saying a general principle that makes sense. You know, wouldn't everybody agree to that? And the answer is no, not everybody agrees to that. Tana ehi. It's actually a machlok et tana'in, the tanya. Shotchan bechama avalok negedaam. Rabbi El Azar, Rabbi Shimon Osrin. If this is talking about a case where uh, on Shabbat, uh, someone went, his clothing got wet. Uh, maybe it was raining or something spilled on him and he wants to put out the clothing to dry. Let's say it got sunny now. All right, so he wants to put it on the clothesline outside. What's the problem? If you go and put the clothing on the clothesline on Shabbat, people are going to pass by and say, I guess he did his laundry today on Shabbat. And they're going to suspect the person of, uh, of sinning. And therefore, the Tanakhama says, you can put it out in the sun, but not when people are watching. Okay, so according to Tanakhama, you can do it as long as it's in private. So you see, uh, whereas it'd be Al-Azad, this should be it'd be Al-Azad, Ben Pedat. Uh, is the standard. He's the same generation of the Bishimon, both students of the Akiva. They say no. So what you see here is that the B El Azad and the Shimon, they would agree with Rav, or Rav is later. Rav would agree with them that both in public and in private, you can do something uh, because of Mad Eat Ayin. And so that would fit um, what, that would fit, uh, that, what Rav said. However, what about Bet Shammai, who said that it's okay, and you can move it in, pub, in private, but not in public. Well, he, that would fit with the Tanakhama here. Whoever that is, that you're allowed to put out the clothing in uh, private, but not in public. So we see that among Tanaim, it's a machloket, and Bet Shammai has, uh, uh, follows one line, and Rav follows the other opinion. Okay, good. So that's all one version of the interpretation of the Mishnah limiting it. And here's another version that's going to be to, to more stringency. Ikad Amre, Amad of Hanan Bar Ami, same, same rabbi that we started with. Machloket Bereshut Hayachid. The whole controversy in the Mishnah is only in private. That's where Bet Hillel, Bet Hillel says it's okay, and you can move the ladder from one place to the other. But in public, no one says it's allowed. Why? The Bet Shammai it lehud Rav Yehuda Amarav. Bet Shammai says, just like you can't do it in public, so too you can't do it in private, because he agrees with the principle later stated by Rav that whatever you can't do in public, you can't do in private either. Whatever is because of Marit Ayin, even in private you can't do. So therefore, public and not, no, and private, no. Bet Yudhidel does not have that principle. He says only in public it's a problem. In private, it's okay. So therefore, you see, in public, everyone agrees it's, it's prohibited. And presumably, because of Marit Ayin, everybody would have a problem, Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai. And now the question is, how about in private? So in private, Bet Hillel will say, oh, no one's looking. So that is okay. All right, so now that's the, this second version. Now we're going to go through the same exercise. It looks here that um, Bet Shammai, who says you, can, you cannot do it in public, and therefore you cannot do it in private either, that would be the, the opinion of Rav. So Rav only follows Bet Shammai. This is not good for Rav. We want everybody to be able to follow Bet Hillel. So we answer, In fact, it's not only Rav's opinion, it's a machlok at Tanaim. And the first opinion says, 
that just like when you have a wet, a wet um, clothing, you can put it on the sun in private, but now where people can see it. So that goes against Rav. And the other second opinion of Bezin Bishimon, that goes with Rav. So you see Rav, it's true. Rav and Bet Shammai happen to agree on this, but Rav is not following only Bet Shammai. There's other, two other students of Rabbi Akiva that uh, follow the same thing. So there's actually many Tanaim that say that once it's, it's a suit in public, it's a suit in private also. And the other opinion of Bet Hillel that says only in public it's prohibited, but that means in private, go ahead and you can still do it. And that's, the, uh, that's this interpretation. All right, so that's uh, fascinating and can affect a lot of things in halakha about public and private. Um, and uh, worth going into more. Okay, now, Mishnah, uh, next section. Matintin de lo ki hai tana. Our Mishnah that we talked about, what we just mentioned about Betil and Bet Shemai, about moving the ladders, seems to go against the following Baraita. The following Baraita is, um, is uh, long and complex, has a lot of opinions. It's not clear what the relation between the opinions are. So that's what we're going to discuss. Titania. In fact, Bet Bet Shemai agree that you can move the ladder. You already see that this is not going to fit with our Mishnah very well. So this this Daita is a different version uh, of the Machloket from our Mishnah. And according to this, it's much more lenient. Yes, you can move it. What's the Machloket? Only problem is putting it back, right? You have it in one spot. I don't know. You like it there. I moved it to get a to get a to get a bird. I got my bird. I finished. I want to move it back to where it was. Is that permitted? So bet um uh, You did what you had to do. You can't go back and put it back now. Betila says, yeah, you can go and put it back, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, you need something that's mukse, uh, so you have to move it because uh, for some reason you need it. Can you go and put it back now after? Um, so that's uh, that's the machlok. It's about putting back. Um, okay, now, Amar Biuta, Mamurim, Besulam Shel Shobach, Besulam Shel Aliyah, Tibre Hakol Asur. The Biuta is limiting this and says, when do they disagree? Only regarding a dovecote ladder. Apparently, there's different kinds of ladders. There's, um, over here, you can see B, this ladder, right? So what we usually think of as a ladder would be smaller and more flimsy. That's a dovecote ladder. It's easier to carry. And that's where the machloket is. Can you, carry, can you put this back or not put this back? But if it's a ladder to go to a second attic ladder, I think this would be more like a staircase or something in between. You know, you have like, sometimes you have these um, uh, staircases that are very steep. So it's kind of like, almost like a ladder. So when you have a second floor, an attic, you might have um, the staircase the staircase type of ladder. And this would be a lot more effort to carry. And so with, if you're talking about an attic ladder, everyone agrees it's prohibited. All right, prohibited what? I guess prohibited to put it back. What's, is, 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 is a Buda arguing on, Tana, on Nabi Shimon ben Lazar, or is he explaining Nabi Shimon ben Lazar? Whenever you have a Medrim Amorim, usually we think it means he's arguing, right? But it's, you never can, can be quite sure if he's just explaining what it means there. Anyway, he limits it to more, be more prohibitive. And then, yet two more opinions. Nabi Dosa Omer, Mateo Mechalon Lechalon. You are allowed to shift it from one, uh, uh, one window to another. What, what case is he talking about? I guess he's talking about the ladder that's made for uh, the attic ladder, the big ladder, even though you can't move it, but you can uh, tilt it. That's one version of, of the Bidosa, whoever said that. Uh, but there's another version that other people say in the name of the Bidosa, that not only can you tilt it, you can also walk it. You know how you take, if there's a heavy ladder, you do um, you know, uh, one leg at a time, and you shift it that way. So don't carry the whole thing. That's too much exertion for Yom Tov, but you can um, shuffle it. Okay, so that's, now we have here four opinions. And uh, you see that it doesn't follow our Mishnah. But here's a story about this Braita. Bene Rebi Haya, Nefuk Likiriata. Rebi Haya was a transitional, um, uh, early, early Amora. And one time his sons who were also Tamidech uh, Chamim. They went to a certain village. When they returned, 
The father asked them, did any halachic issue come up? Did anybody ask you anything? You know, I guess when, when we, uh, you know, some of the trip, it's like, you know, how was it? Where did you stay? How was the food? So the rabbis ask, any halachic question, interesting halachic question come up while you're away? Amrullah sulam baliyadenu. Yes, a ladder came to us. Someone asked us about a ladder on Yom Tov, if they can move it, and we said it's permitted. The father says, go back and tell them it's not allowed. You made a mistake. So let's analyze their mistake. What did they think? He thought that the Biuda is arguing with the Nakama. The Biuda said, oh, they only have a machlok about a dovecote ladder. But regarding an attic ladder, everybody says it's not allowed. That's only the Biuda's opinion. And from the fact that he says something different, so it must be Shimon ben Lazar thought that an attic ladder is permitted, right? Because he didn't say anything about it. So attic ladder would be the same. And Betty Lel says, you can move it, you can bring it back. So they assume that Allah should follow Rabbi Lazar, Shimon ben Lazar, and forget Rabbi Yudah because he's arguing. That's what they thought. Um, Right. Uh, However, that's not true. The father says, that was only explaining the first opinion and said, listen, that first opinion, I talked to him, I know what he meant. He said he only meant that, that, that leniency regarding a Dovko ladder, not an attic ladder. Okay, so that, that was the conversation. Now we're going to analyze it further. Mimai, how can you prove one way or another? How do you know that he is in fact, um, or uh, explaining. See, um, in the original language, it says that um, uh, um, you can uh, move a sulam from one shovach to another. So what do you see that? Where was the, where was the uh, ladder to begin with? At a dovecote. And you can move it from one dovecote to another. That proves that they're only talking about a dovecote ladder. If it was an attic ladder, then it should say you can move a ladder from wherever it is to a shovach. It doesn't start off in a shovach if it's not a shovach ladder. Okay, so that's very insightful, right? From that one word that seems to be inconsequential, you can see that Rabbi Yudah is explaining the, and analyzing the language, and we have a proof in the language that is only explaining and not disagreeing. All right, good point. Therefore, we must have meant that if it's a dovecote ladder, you can move it. If it's an attic ladder, you cannot move it. And what about the other? What about the sons? What did they think? They know how to read also, right? They have, they have uh, some, some uh, understanding. How did they interpret it? It doesn't say, if you really meant to limit it to a, a dovecote ladder, he sort of said, a dovecote ladder, you can move. And so when it says from one dovecote to another, it means even to many, even multiple stops. So yes, it started off as an attic ladder. It was somewhere to the attic. But then I moved it to one dovecote. And the chidush is, I can move it to a second dovecote, to a third, to a fourth. And that's why it says, mi shovach le shovach. So actually, they can read it just fine. Okay, good. So that's one version of that story. Another version of the story, when the father asked, any, any story, anything happened in the village? They said, yes, we had a story about tilting a ladder from one window to another. And we told them it's allowed. That was the story. Go and prohibit that which you uh, permitted. You know, Latir also means to untie. And so means to tie. Right? Go tie up what you undid. And uh, because you made a mistake. What's this mistake? They thought that the last line where the Bidosa says, um, you're permitted to, um, remember here, it says, it says you can move it, even though it's not allowed to move it, you can, you can tilt it from one side to another. So they thought that um, 
uh, what Tanakh Kama said is, uh, uh, is not allowed, the Bidosa says it's permitted, so therefore it's permitted. Elohi, It's the opposite. That which Tanakh Kama said is permitted, the Bidosa said is prohibited. Bidosa was actually being more stringent and saying even a dovecote ladder can only be tilted. Um, and, and like that. But he wasn't talking, the Bidosa, in other words, was going back to Tanakama and saying, even that's not allowed. He wasn't going back on what just came before and saying, oh, right, uh, the, the sons read it as going what, what came right before, meaning that attic ladder, oh, the attic ladder, I know you can't move it, but you can tilt it, which means the Bidosa is more lenient than the immediately previous opinion. And the father said, no, no, he's going back on the first opinion and says, and said that one you can tilt, but the attic ladder you can't do at all. So go back and fix what they said. All right, excellent. And now last part. Aval Mateo lechalon lechalon regarding the tilting from one window to the other. Alma gabesim hat yom tov bet shamay lechumra ubet hilel lekula. So back to our Mishnah. Bet shamay was the one that said you can't move it, and bet hilel says you can move it. So you see that when it comes to the joy of Yom Tov, the joy of Yom Tov is you want to get a bird and be able to do shechita so you can have a nice meal. And Bet Shammai is more stringent, and meaning you can't, right? You can't do it, can't get the bird. Uh, I mean, you can get a bird for only one, one dove coat, but not from another one. And Bet Hillel is more lenient and says you can do more things to, uh, more things are permitted to allow the happiness of Yom Tov. That's what we see here. However, Urminhu, Urminhi, in the first Mishnah, where we saw three examples, we're just quoting one of them. And there, if someone uh, killed uh, a deer or a bird on Yom Tov, Bet Shammai says, you go ahead, you can go and dig and cover it. So they're more uh, permissive and they take Simchat Yom Tov more seriously. And Bet Hillel says, no, don't do it unless you had it prepared. So you see that Bet Hillel is the one that's Mahmid in this case. So that's the contradiction, right? Which way does it go? Is Bet Shemai Mahmid or is he Mekel? Is Bet Hillel Mekel or is he Mahmid? Amar Biochanan, Mukhlevet Ashita. You know what? Switch the opinions around. Now, we're not sure which one to switch around. Uh, uh, the, the first, uh, she switches around the, the, uh, the second, others switch around the first. And uh, so seem, most opinions seem to switch around the first, which means our opening Mishnah that says Bet Hillel is Mahmir. No, no, it's the opposite. Bet Hillel is always Mekel. So now it's good. Now we followed, you know, the, the regular rule, Bet Hillel is always more, uh, more, more lenient. So switch it around. All right. Now we ask, but Rabbi Hanan, I know you told us to switch it around, but we'd rather not have to switch it around. And truth is, we don't have to, because you can explain the logic of why you might be Mahmir in one case. And Mekel, another case, what's the logic? Maybe when Bet Shammai says you're allowed to go and cover the blood, remember we said that's an unlimited case only when a shovel is already stuck in the ground. So you already had the shovel prepared, you had it in mind, you're not doing a full uh, uh, digging. So really, it's a very little thing. He's not very Mekel. But he would agree that if you don't have a shovel on the ground, you wouldn't be able to. So you see, he's actually pretty stringent regarding that. And so therefore, we can fit with the opinion he says here. And we can also reconcile Bet Hillel. Here, because I'm carrying it, what's the problem? People are going to see and think I'm going to fix my roof. No, so here, it's easy to be lenient because everybody sees I'm moving it to my dovecote. And therefore, they'll assume that uh, it's, it, it's okay. They don't have to worry about it. But there, this, this, it's, it's a more serious problem. I'm going, making, taking dirt, exertion, all kinds of problems. It's not just a problem of Marit Ayin. So it makes sense for Bet Hillel to be stringent regarding covering the blood, but be lenient here, right? So in just in other words, just because they're, you know, they're crossed doesn't mean that they don't make any sense. Uh, they can explain themselves perfectly well. Um, ella ikashya hakashya. So you know what? Must be the que- well, the question was different. We know that Biochanan said you have to switch the switch the uh, the opinions. We're just not sure. That's an answer. We're just not sure what the question was. So let's try a new question in which we might actually need the Biochanan's answer of switching the the opinions. Ella ikashya hakashya. Bet shemay omrim lo yitol ella imken 
ניענה מבעוד יום. עובד הלל אומרים, עומד ואומר, זה וזה אני נוטל. So there's a new machlok that we haven't seen yet, which is that when the, dove, the, the doves in the dove coat, they can't be mukseh, you have to pick them, you have to designate them, that you want to use them. I said, oh, I'm going to eat this one for lunch tomorrow on Yom Tov. So here, Bet Shemai says, you cannot take a, a bird unless you moved it the day before. You got to go up, out of Yom Tov, and take this bird, shake it around, it says, do you going to be for lunch tomorrow? And that way, it's not mukseh. Bet, she, Bet Hillel says, no, I just have to go and point. They say, oh, that's a nice one. I don't have to touch it. So here we see Bet Hillel is more lenient. So we see that here, Bet Shammai is stringent, Bet Hillel is lenient, as it, as it usually is. And this is where we asked, and uh, uh, the whole thing, right? If you uh, kill a bird, Bet Shammai is the one that says, yes, you can go and dig it and cover the blood. And Bet Hillel is the one that says, you shouldn't. Bet Shammai, Bet Hillel is more machmir. What's going on? This is the case where Amar Rabbi Yochanan Mochlefet Ashita. Okay, you got to change one or the other, uh, change them around, and that's what it means. But here also we reject it. You don't have to go and do this uh, extreme answer and change around opinions, which you know we have traditions that this is what they said. Um, uh, same thing. Bet, Bet Shammai is really not so lenient. He only allowed it because you already have a shovel in the ground. So it's not mukseh. You already have the, 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 the dirt half in the, uh, half in, and, and you're just doing a little thing. And so it's not, he's really actually machmir. Or you could also explain Betilel. What's the problem here of the bird? It's mukseh. Okay, if I go and, and point and I say, I want to eat this bird tomorrow, it's permitted, right? That's, that's easy, easy to get around. It's mukseh, which is easy to undo, um, uh, easy to designate beforehand. I don't have to pick it up. But with regarding shoveling, now I'm going to do a lot of exertion and shovel and uh, make a hole and smash the dirt it involves a lot more problems. So it makes sense to be more machmid here. So therefore, you know what? We don't need the Biochanan's answer for this either. We're going to try a few more times, a few more contradictions, and each one we're going to try to apply to Biochanan to see why, in what case did he say we actually have to go ahead and switch around the opinions. But you see, the switching around the opinions is very tricky. And a lot of it has to do with what we saw on Daf Bet, which is sometimes we apply uh, the opinion that we want to be the halacha, the Biodanasi calls that the uh, Betilel or calls that the majority opinion. So that's why this Mukhlevet Hashita can be very tricky. It's true, you might have a contradiction, but maybe you really do have to. The original historical uh, uh, opinion was the opposite, and maybe it was recorded in the other way um, because of halacha lamaseh. So we'll continue this fascinating discussion tomorrow. Baruch Adonai Amen.